Yo, what is going on everybody? Competitive shooter and fighting game player Inzim here, and today I'm going to bring you guys a guide about base Goku. And to be honest, he's one of my favorite characters in this game, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to Dash Fight and smash that like button for more character guides and to check out their website at dashfight.com for all things FGC related. So, starting with his normals, um, he's a Goku, so he has Goku lights, meaning they're not the best, but they're definitely not bad. He's a 6 frame character, and his 5L is minus 4 on block, and he can actually chain these together, so he can do 404 and 2L, 2L, which is really, really nice. Um, his 2L is actually 0 on block, and that is insanely cheap, considering he actually has an unreactable command grab with his light command grab. Because his light command grab is unreactable, he could do things like jab, command grab, or he could do like jab, jab, command grab. And that's really, really hard to get out of because it's essentially two mix-ups in one sequence. Um, and the fact that his 2L is zero on block makes that even stronger because you can kind of loop these. And each time I press 2L here, it could have been an unreactable command grab. So this is actually just them guessing over and over again. Like this is insanely cheap. Um, the next normal I wanted to talk about, second of his auto combo, this is good for picking up air hits, so to speak. Um, I said I'm crouch on accident. Like that. It's good to anti-air sometimes, but other than that, you don't want to be kind of going into it too much. Um, if you are going to do this, you actually want to use his full auto combo, which is the next one I want to talk about. His full auto combo is actually a very strong scramble tool because it hits both sides and a very large hitbox at that this is his ASS basically and this entire shockwave is a big box all that is a large hitbox and he does it pretty fast so if somebody's jumping over you and you kind of don't know what's going to happen you can just mash your auto combo sometimes and it kind of just clears the situation out it's actually really really good and it hits really hard so next normal is his 5M that I wanted to talk about it's a 9 frame forward advancing mid that is really, really strong in almost any fighting game. Um, nine frame or defensive mids are broken, especially in this game, because there's like a lot of different situations where you can use these, right? One of my favorite ones is if I know somebody's gonna stagger, you can use it to call out a stagger, and you can get a very high damage counterattack. And getting hit by his 5M does a lot of damage, even when he's by himself. That was almost 5k just from a medium mid-screen. That is a huge chunk of damage. You can also use this move to set up spacing traps, which is really, really nice. Like, depending on the ranges of this move connecting, um, you actually can't challenge. Like that. That's really, really strong. And it's all around a really, really good normal. Um, next one is his 2M. It's a 10 frame low. It is extremely unsafe on block and being minus 11. But that's okay because when you're pressing with this character, you never really stop on the 2M. You usually go to something else. And because it's a 10 frame low, you can actually do a little bit something within the mix ups that we'll get to later. But it, it gets the job done, like I said earlier. Um, the next one is he has a multi key blast. His key blasts are normal speed, being frame 27 full screen. And he has six of them. So any other characters who have a lower amount of key blasts than him, he can actually win the key blast war. And that's pretty important against characters like Teen Gohan. Go tanks, whoever it may be, right? Um, so his key blasts again are actually really, really good. There are minus four up close on block if you wanted to know. These are also really good for resetting your strings and doing any button in the key blast actually sets up that nice spacing for the 5M. So these two combined are actually like really, really good. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about is actually something unique to him, which is his 1S, 2S, and 3S series. So basically what's happening here is he can shoot a key blast close range, mid range, or far range. And this key blast is extremely fast. This is actually one of the fastest key blasts in the entire game. It is even faster than Team Gohan's key blast. And if you didn't know, Team Gohan's key blast is actually in the fast category. Normal key blast hit frame 27 full screen, like base Goku. This is normal speed. Or the fast category actually hits at frame 23 full screen. And these are insanely fast. Team Gohan's key blasts are really, really fast, but base Goku hits at frame 17. This is instant. 
this move is very hard to dash block because of it. And this move is actually tied to a lot of damage. Like if you get hit by this, you're gonna like you're gonna explode. Right? And he's finishing the combo already at 4k. The interesting part about this move is he shoots two of them and you can change the timing of these. So you can get them the true string. I'll set him the guard all. I'll just set them to reflect, that'll actually be easier to see. Oops. You can get him the true string, or you can delay them to frame trap. And the reason why this is annoying is because he can kind of walk you across the screen by doing this, and he threatens to do another one, and you can't move, and then you get a punish like that. So these are a very, very strong neutral tool. Um, your opponent can super dash through them, but because they're coming into contact with a key blast, you actually are allowed to 2-H them. So if you can react fast enough, you get a really nice punish. Um, the way to use this move, and it's really nice, is to kind of threaten your opponent so they can't move. So something like Key Blast plus Assist, and then you dash up, and then you threaten to you threaten their movement option with uh, the 3S, which is really, really nice. The main one you are going to be using for the most part is 3S. You will be using some of these depending on the spacing, but 3S is definitely like the safest range to use them. The last mind game you can play with this move is, if you press S one more time, he will actually teleport to you with a drop kick. This one can be 2-H'd, but the mind game behind this one is, it's so fast that your opponent has to almost be mashing 2-H, it's very hard to react to him teleporting, and you don't have to teleport. So you can shoot, choose to shoot 2, and if your opponent's waiting for you to teleport to 2-H, you just shoot a Key Blast, shoot his Beam, take your turn, it's really, really strong. And when you actually do the teleport one thing a lot of people don't know is he is invincible frame one meaning this is actually really really good to dodge things if you can see the invincibility frames down there he actually becomes invincible the second you input s you see that he's already invincible so he actually becomes invincible insanely fast so this is really good for dodging things as well this is a really strong stagger move as well so this has a lot of uses to it and i implore you guys to like really really experiment with this one because this one's really really good so the next thing i wanted to talk to you guys about is his special moves and we're going to start with his laria series the shoulders um these go decently far they're further than his normals for the most part and the thing that are interesting about this move is outside of being a very fast uh lariat it is H priority, and what that basically means is it is the highest level of priority in the game, meaning that nothing will beat this move. It is unbeatable. If this move comes in contact with another physical move, there is an almost 100% chance it will always win no matter what. To show this off, we're going to use Tingo Hans Lariat, right? This move is insane. If you challenge this move with a button, or, I mean, I use a medium, so that makes sense. If I was moving a light, it won't actually ever win. That wasn't EX. Okay, no, that's not what I did. That's what I did. Right? But if you challenge this move with his Lariat, because it is a higher priority, it's going to win. See? This move can never lose. And this move has a lot of damage tied to it. So getting hit by this hurts. He can almost do 4k off of Vanish Confirm without even using an assist. That is a lot of damage. So this move is very, very strong. He can do it in the air and he recovers decently fast. It's minus five on block, which is really, really good. And an interesting thing that happens when you use this on the ground is you see that spacing. And because the spacing is like this, he can actually play a mind game. Whereas if you get the opponent to block them, because he's so spaced, a lot of characters lights will reach in this or won't reach in this range. See that? Space this, it won't reach. Then you can combine it with his 5M to get a really nice punish. If somebody were to want to reach you when you do this move, they would have to use a further reaching normal. Like, let's say, one of their mediums. And Tingo Han medium sucks, so let's use you as a better example. You'd have to use a medium, right? To reach him. But if they're using a medium, you can actually use his 4 frame, which is the EX version. The EX version is a 4 frame reversal that moves his hurt box back very fast, and then he kind of yeets himself forward with the actual one and this move is insanely broken like this is in my opinion my favorite move of this character because of how strong and versatile it is but yes it's a four frame reversal that also can be used as a mix-up tool doing something like this is really really cheap but we'll talk about that later 
but it's like a really really good move so if you combine it with the spacing of, of this and you know they're going to use a further reaching normal you can kind of outplay them and just use the ex and also punish them so between this mind game his light lariat is insane and even last thing i'm gonna show about the light lariat before i talk about the other versions is if you block his light lariat in the air he's actually plus Let's see if i can show that off so if you ever see them block this one in the air you can actually just kind of take your turn you see how it says plus one right there so you can actually fall with the button like that take your turn it's really really good um his medium one is okay it is also a four from reversal but it is very slow there's a lot of there's a lot of times your opponent will be will be able to press on this one and still be able to block so i don't recommend using this one too too much so like things like say so i can block after that like um, it's just slow, so I don't recommend using this one too much, but it's also not a bad option. The EX one is the real moneymaker. I usually only use the light in the EX one for the most part. Whichever situation I would use medium, I just kind of use EX because it's the better version. But all three of them are also really, really good. Um, the next special move I want to talk about is his Spirit Bomb. This one's interesting because you have to charge it first, but once the Spirit Bomb is charged, it has a few unique properties going for it. So first thing is, it has tracking on it. When you throw this thing, it will actually track to the opponent. It'll do its best to track to you, so I have him set to jumping. And it'll actually curve to the air and track them, which is really, really good, actually. Like, that's really, really good. Because you can combine it with an assist to get really strong uh, neutral sequences, like... Like, that's really, really good. The next unique property it has going for it is the fact that this is not a beam. This is actually a super move. Again, the level of durability on this projectile is actually a super. So that means it will beat everything else. It will go through key blasts. It'll even go through beams because it out prioritizes the beam like a super would. And this thing is a TOD starter. This thing leads to kills. So getting hit by this hurts a lot. So because this hurts so much, people will be very hesitant on trying to zone you back because again, it tracks you. So even if they're in the air doing something like shooting an air key blast or something, it will track right to them and still punish them. So the reason why this is so strong is combined with his other tools that I was talking about, like his singular key blast and his 3S. People will be very reluctant to zone him back once this move is charged because of how much damage it does if it does hit them. So one thing I like to do with this character is I like charging the spirit bomb and kind of saving it and threatening them with the risk of, hey, I can throw this and kill you for it. So you don't want to zone me back and you can kind of get away with controlling the pace of neutral very easily because of this. And this is like a really, really nice mind game. People should play more with him. And I think it's a definitely underrated one. Um, the next special move I'm going to talk about with him is actually his beam so his beam is actually one of the strongest beams in the game in my opinion because it has a few unique properties going for it the first thing is it is a single hitting beam and because it only hits one time you can actually do some pretty interesting things in neutral with it right so multi hit beams can't do this but if you actually get them to block the beam in the air you can actually gel a vanish on the ground because it's single hitting and they're going through all the block stun at that one hit so you can actually delay your vanish and gel them to the ground and this is super super strong so i'll show you like that that gelled i'm gonna set them to reflect so you can see like that that was a gelling sequence and this is actually plus like if i were to take them off reflect and jump you actually see it's plus two like a normal vanish so this is insanely cheap because in neutral if you're kind of chilling and you notice they're jumping a lot you can kind of catch them with the beam uh, that was too high gel into the ground and then take your turn this the same is also true for his other angles of his beam he could point his beam upwards you can also super dash out to the upwards one which is okay it's not the best i don't recommend using this one too often but he can angle it downwards in the air as well and the roll is applied for even the downwards beam as well. They block this one in the air, you delay your vanish, and you can still take a turn. Really, really strong. Um, the other unique property I was speaking of about this move is because of how safe this beam actually is. Typically, beams are very unsafe in this game, but if you TK his beam, 
and to TK, otherwise known as a Tiger Knee, you basically have to do the special move input right as you leave the ground. So a pretty easy trick I do to do this input is because his beam is 236S, you do 236S, 8S, or sorry, 236, 8S. So you basically do the input of the move like normal, but you add an up input at the end, an 8, right before you input the S. So you're basically just doing a quarter circle up. And if you do it right, as you can see, his beam is actually minus 2. Normally, his beam should be around minus 9-ish. If you do this correctly, though, it is actually very safe. Like, this is, all, this is one of the most unpunishable beams in the game. And show a demonstration as to why this can be so strong is because if somebody were to do this, if they were to TK this the right way, and you were to try to super dash punish it on reaction, let's say if they missed, you get 2 aged because he recovers way too fast. Unlike other beams, that would have been a punish. He can actually recover in time to 2 h you, so between using his spare bomb charges to threaten people to not zone him back, and using his tools, he can really set the pace of neutral extremely well. And then if somebody gets too close, you know, you just let it rock, like get off me, right? So before we get into his block strings and mix up, I want to talk a little bit about his last special, which is his command grab. And the reason why I'm going over this before that section is because the basis of this character's pressure and mix up is heavily centralized around his command grab. His 214L series, is a series of command grabs, his light one being unreactable, and he can actually extend this with the vanish to get a, a combo, which is very unique to command grabs. He can also tag cancel off it to get another character in for combo. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's the fact that his command grab is unblockable, meaning this cannot be blocked, they must jump this. But because it's unreactable, your opponent has to effectively guess where you're gonna put it. And that's what makes it so strong. His medium one, is very reactable it is slower but the catch to this one is it goes very very far like deceptively far like that is a very long range for command grab again just like his um elbow series you don't really use the medium one too much um i'd recommend you mainly switch between ex and light again his light one is unreactable it's super cheap you can't see it his ex one I'm going to be completely honest is it is reactable but it is one of the hardest things to react to in the game in my opinion because it is actually the same speed as his light at 20 frames um the only difference is you do have an ex indicator telling you he's doing it so that's why some people deem this to be reactable because you have an actual indicator saying hey i'm trying to grab you but again because it's relatively the same speed that's still one of the hardest things to react to you get a full combo punish if they don't react to this one and it's really really good because you can still keep your sliding you get a good situation that does a lot of damage for something that's that hard to deal with um again his ex actually goes just as far as his medium which is insane and the reason why this is so cheap is combined with his 3s and 2s mind games he can do some very annoying pressure where if he has you in the corner he can do things like backdash 3s and the command grab you from very very far when you were least expecting it and he gets a lot of damage off this so this is really really good all right on to some of my more favorite strings about this character and some that i believe is really really strong but before we get to that i kind of want to explain a thought process a lot of people have on fighting this character to help you open up people with this character and that is when people are more experienced against this character they realize that the risk reward is not in their favor to get frame trap because think about it his command grab even though while it is unreactable does about 25 percent if you do get grabbed by it of course not adding supers right but if you get frame trapped by this character he can do upwards towards a touch of death he could tod you from it or he will bare minimum at least deal 5k around there so really think about it the risk reward is not really in your favor to get frame trapped so something a lot of people will do to kind of guess with his whole strike throw thing while also keeping themselves safe is they'll choose reflect as a defensive option more than not because if you choose to frame trap them to call out them trying to escape the strike throw situation um they will reflect it and because he's kind of lacking anti reflect a little bit like his mediums don't anti reflect by themselves they typically leave the situation pretty easily and if you choose command grab they're okay with it because in their heads okay 
took the guess. I took the throw. He only does 25%. I get to guess again when I like when I get out the combo. So one string that I really like to do is doing frame trap 5M into 5S. This is strong because it calls out a lot of it calls out multiple options while also keeping yourself safe. Um, if your opponent chooses reflect because they were guessing a frame trap, you actually aim to reflect, so you're still in control of the situation. So you can do things like like that, and then call your assist like to keep return, which is really really nice. And if your opponent chooses jump because they're scared of the command grab, then you just get a high damage counter, right? You try to jump, you frame trap them, they die. Um, I didn't do the string right there, but it looked like like that, and you still get your full combo from this. So this string is really healthy and really strong for his game plan. Doing other things to call out Reflect is also very, very strong and extremely recommended for him. Doing things like when you're when you're doing this 2L pressure, a very common option to get out of this because it's zero on block would be to Reflect, right? Because if you leave him one gap, they'll Reflect out of it. So doing things like waiting for the Reflect, like that and punishing it is really, really strong. Doing things like true stringing your low or true stringing a key blast in certain spots is really, really strong because again, these are ways to call out reflects. So doing things like that is really, really strong because it will hit the reflect if they're mashing it because you'll true string a low. And obviously, if they're mashing reflect and you true string a key blast, they'll get guard cancel reflect instead. It'll look like this. And you can punish them. So these are a few things to keep in mind when pressuring with him. Um, some of my other favorite strings with this character is again this one is really nice because look at the spacing it sets up it actually sets up a really strong spacing where they actually can't challenge with most of their lights so you can do things like 2m whatever this is really really nice doing things like 2m in the key blast is good because it sets up that which is really really nice and one of my actual favorite strings to do this is kind of a gimmick kind of but it works really really well is actually abusing this whole mind game of he can actually pull himself back with shoulder. So doing things like going into 2H and delaying your medium shoulder. A lot of people either press jab or mash 2H after a block 2H because they're thinking, okay, he's going to autopilot super dash or he's going to like stop. So delaying your shoulder is really, really good. Like that. It's especially effective in the corner, but it can also be done mid screen. And as you can see, it's really, really good. So combining delaying the EX, uh, delaying, you can use EX or medium, delaying one of the elbows or doing immediate elbow because if you do 2H immediate light elbow, you are actually minus three on block. And the spacing of this is like perfect because some characters lights won't reach as you can see, right? So if I have them to set light immediately, if they try to take the turn, I'm aware of the spacing. You can actually just press five them and you can start this mind game that I explained earlier. It's very, very powerful. The last string that I want to give you guys with this character is using 1S and pressure because of the way this move works. Even if you were to jump it because it reaches to the top of the screen, jumping this move will actually make, it will bring them to the ground and in some situations depending on the height it will actually be plus. As you can see I was plus uh, 7. This is really really nice for keeping people locked down in the corner. we are doing things like backdash, you know, so you're jumping too much to do that and you can frame trap with 5H really really good you could do like doing things like that it's not bad but it's a very strong move you can even use it in block strings like this to set up even more chances of your strike throw situation because you can frame trap this you can use it as a stagger point it's not the most safe but because you can delay the frame trap as much as you want it becomes pretty scary to press on so you can do things like and then use this mind game and do it again, right? This is just a very strong string in a mind game that I really recommend people play with this character because it can really throw your opponent off. Alright, on to the fun part, the mix-up. And this is why this character is so sick because his mix-up is super cheap and he does a lot of damage for how cheap his mix-up is. So, again, because his light command grab is unreactable, the basis of how his pressure is structured is you make your opponent guess between strike or throw, and you can put this command grab anywhere you want. After one jab, you can just run up and do it like this. You do it after two jabs, like mm -mm. after two jabs, 5M, do it, 2M, 
through throw them. 5S, throw them. Even his heavies, you delay it, throw them. And the mind game of this is, you the opponent has to do anything other than block to deal with the command grab. So they'll choose a defensive option such as mashing, they'll be jumping, even potentially see some level 3s or frame 1 options like DP to deal with it. Um, and the way to cover these options with the exception of DPs and level 3s is you were to actually frame trap them. So it is a frame trap button or the light throw. So if your opponent is trying to jump, so I'm have the bot set to up back. Um, if you were to frame trap, do like 5L, delay 5M, if they if they thought the throw was coming, they get hit with a very high damage starter. And, and I, was shoot, I already showed off earlier how much damage that thing does, and that is the mind game like. Are you willing to take this throw that would do around 25% to you, or are you going to take a 5M that's going to kill your entire character? So, keep guessing. The reason why I mentioned this was cheap earlier is because now that you understand the concept of his command grab being unreactable, because this is zero on block, he can steal turns over and over again, and each and every one of these could have been a command grab, and that is Omega Cheap. Like, Omega Omega Cheap. <laughs> Some other of his mix-up tools that are really, really strong is EX Elbow, like I mentioned earlier. His cross-up is good because he has a Goku cross-up pretty fast, and if your opponent tries to react to cross-up, if you jump forward, you can't super jump forward, you have to do normal jump forward so your character doesn't turn around and do EX Elbow. He will actually jump forward, the EX will pull him back the same side, and then he'll do the elbow. And depending on the height you do this, this can actually be very safe. See that? Minus two. Like, if I can get it again. Minus two. So you can do things like, because he's minus two, which is really, really annoying, even if they block it. But I'm going to be honest, no one's blocking this. This is unblockable. This is cheap. You can be 2H doing this, so be careful. But, again, this is just cheap. He actually has another way to left right mix you using his beam. Again, with the same thing as how I showed the TK input off earlier. You basically do TK beam and you hold A. So you basically TK beam like I showed off earlier, but you do the downwards one. And the reason why this is is because it looks like a same side option. So if you were to keep crossing them up and then you were to do this, they'd see your character jump right beside them and they try to block the cross up and they get hit by the same side beam. And the reason why this one is important to add to your game plan, even though this one is also a very strong same side option, is because the same side EX elbow mix can be 2H. Both the cross up and the EX elbow lose to 2H. But the beam actually beats 2H. So if your opponent is a bit smarter than your average fish, then they might know to press 2H on him regardless of what he's doing to beat um, the EX elbow mix up. But if you do this, they're going to try to 2H a beam, they're going to get hit, they're going to be mad. So really really nice the next style of mix-up that he can do which is really really important is how to use his EX command grab um, his EX command grab serves as a dragon rush crush and for anyone who's unfamiliar with this term this is basically a move that mimics the look of a dragon rush and the timing of a dragon rush and some people will actually press dragon rush on reaction to these moves mistaking it for a dragon rush but because it's not they get hit right so any move with an EX flash with a noticeable gap in between can actually serve as this. His EX grab is a very, very strong one because of it. Again, Dragon Rush hits at frame 21. His EX command grab hits at frame 21. And also the ring, the green ring that shows with Dragon Rush, looks kind of similar to the EX ring. So it even mimics the look of a Dragon Rush. So this is very, very strong. So some ways to layer this mix up is, let's say you Dragon Rush them like this once. Next time in this situation, you set it up again choose EX command grab and I promise you they're not jumping in they're getting hit they, they got mixed so this is really really nice all right so the last thing I wanted to show you guys about his mix-up and I think this is one of the most important things about his mix-up and I think this is a requirement to play this character is knowing how to get your mix-ups from his supers because both his supers actually present a very strong mix-up situation as long as you set them up correctly so the first one is actually with this Kyle Ken once base Goku's by himself and he has access to Kaioken times 20, I think it's called. Right? Is it 20? Yes, 20. Um, he actually gets access to a level 2 that actually sets up a 50-50. So, it's the beam when he's on the ground. This one. He'll be plus 25. And if you do dash up to him... I didn't get my dash. But if you do dash up to him, you actually get 
a nice meaty on jump if you're having set to hold up back if you time it correctly like that and the damage on this basically means they're gonna die I dropped the combo that I already did 4.1 that's a lot of damage and the mix-up is either run up to him so that's your strike or run up like command grab so you're basically just setting up his strike throw right there and this is very, very potent because it, he can kind of loop this situation over and over again, which is really, really scary. If your opponent is scared of the two of them and they choose to do nothing, run up command grab and you loop the situation again. You can even do run up command grab and do this. And then loop the situation over and over again. Run up, make him guess again. Loop it back. It's really, really, really strong. <laughs> the next one is actually his level 3 key. Not a lot of people actually know he has one, and it is DHC specific. So the one rule to getting this mix-up is you must have you must have the spare bomb connect when they're on the ground. If you didn't know, depending on the height of the spare bomb, the amount of damage the super does, and the frame data, how plus he is, actually changes. The higher up you are, the less plus he is, but the more damage the spare bomb does. This mix-up only works with the ground despair bomb. The one that's the least amount of damage, but it's the most plus, which will be plus 51. So that's your same side high. Next, I'll show the 2M option. Put your same side low. And then, again, if your team can pull out the corner, or if it naturally is a mid screen spare bomb, you can get a really nasty uh, cross up option. Which, to be honest, no one ever blocks this. So, this option is really, really nice. Like, that's really, really good. And that combos, don't worry. So, I think this mix-up is very, very important if you do play Space, if you do play base Goku and your team enables this because it you get way too much not to do it. And again, because any combo in the Spare Bomb, because it's such a high damage super, it's going to lead into a two-touch if they guess wrong, basically under every single circumstance. So it's a really potent mix-up. It also serves as a spark bait because... You can set it up and you can use his elbows and because his elbows pulls his hurt box back like i mentioned it also sets up as a really nasty spark bait setup by just simply faking the mix up and then just doing the x elbow like that and that will base spark so this is really really scary to be in this is a like this is why i think it is super super important that you learn this mix up if you do play this character so Onto his combos, I have three combos to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys a basic mid-screen route. I'm going to show you guys a corner route, and I'm going to give you guys his vanish extension. Those three combos should be able to get you right. The cool thing about his combos is once you learn his re-jump that I'm going to be showing off in these combos, um, basically every single one of his combos is the same. He kind of does the same combo even mid-screen and in the corner. He just kind of loops his mid-screen combo in the corner. You'll see what I mean. But once you have these routes down, you should be good for majority of his combos. So let's get started. So a few things I want to point out about this route. First thing is this almost did 3.8 solo. That's a lot of damage to get hit by 5 0. The second thing is the amount of corner carry this went from corner to corner that is insane that is a solo combo that did that much damage and that much corner carry meaning that every time this character hits you he guarantees a very very strong situation because again most characters will always do more damage when they have you in the corner and the fact that he can put you in the corner very easily and he does so much damage by himself can almost guarantee the two touch if he hits you with any light or medium starter which is really really nice and that kind of just adds to him being a shotgun character, right? He does a lot of damage. Um, 
The other thing I want to point out is the reason why I recommend going into 5H for his routes is because of this situation. If you go into J2H or J or 2H, sorry, um, you don't get as much damage. You don't get quite as bad as corner carry. You might get a little bit better Oki, but I personally recommend doing his 5H route because again, you get the better situation because you have them in the corner. You can start your 1S pressure, whatever you want to do, whatever it may be, right? And you get even more damage. So here's an example of what one of his corner combos may look like. So, a few important things to note about this combo. First, like I said, it really resembles his mid screen combo because it is. He's basically just looping the first loop of the mid screen combo into 2M, 5S, 5H in one more loop before going into auto combo and finishing it. Um, it does 3.9 and almost builds 2 bars solo from a 5L. That's still above average damage output. And the other nice thing about this combo is actually um, how much meter it builds, almost two bars. That's really, really nice. He's building a lot of meter for himself and he actually has ways to build even more meter that I'm gonna show in a second. But one really important tip that I actually got for doing this combo because base Goku is not known to have the easiest combos. He's known for slightly difficult combos because of the amount of delays and manual inputs that you have to do to get it. But one really good tip I got to make this much easier, almost auto-timed, is actually this. You're doing this loop past the first one. To do this second loop right here, the 2M, 5S, 5H Super Dash, you can actually do immediate 2M, delay your 5S, like a pretty decent delay to 5S, 5H Super Dash. So like the only delay you actually have to do here is the 5S. And if you delay the 5S, you can kind of input everything on time. So you do 5H, immediate Super Dash, re-jump, and when you delay the 5S like this, it actually sets up the height for the um, loop. And this made it very, very easy for me when I first figured this one out. A good way to practice this is to set the mid-air recovery to off and kind of loop the combo over and over again because he won't, it won't drop you to hit stun decay. And this is really good for just getting used to the timing of this. Like this. I dropped my 2M input, but... Looping this over and over again is a really good way to get used to the timing of his combos. To get consistent with them. Like that, keep going. You can do it for however long you want. And that's just to get used to the timing of it. But, yeah. And lastly, I'm going to show off his Vanish Confirm. It looks something like this. Over half screen corner carry, it gets the job done. The reason why I did so little damage here is because it's off a of command grab starter, but if I were to do it off a of lariat, like his light lariat, like shown earlier, it would do it upwards towards like 4k by himself. Um, one very important thing I wanted to mention about his combo and his routing before we left this section is he actually has one different ender you can do to end his combos. This ender does less damage than the combos I've shown before, but it gives better Oki and it charges his spare bomb which is really really important and I actually recommend doing this which is basically you do the exact same combo which everyone you were doing before but you end it like this so instead of doing 2M 5H up beam super dash you just do 2M 5M it's sorry 2M 5H 2 2S so you can replace this at any part of the combo where you do up beam super dash you can just do um, 2M 5H uh, 2S like this so again, less damage, less corner carry, but you get the spare bomb charged, and you get a better Oki, especially in the corner. So, like in the corner, you get a safe jump, which is just hold up, come down with an H, that's a safe jump. Really, really strong. And the reason why it's important to build a spare bomb, like mentioned earlier, because of how strong his neutral becomes when it's present, his combo structure and routing becomes a lot better. The previous combo shown was building around two bars and doing almost 4k damage, but if you were to use his spare bomb charge and spend it in his combos, and depending on the assist you have, he can actually do this. Um, this is really, really nice for him. So take that combo I did earlier with the right assist. Get charge, then spin, then charge again, and look at my meter. I did 4k, really good Oki, almost 2.75 bars built. That is a lot of meter. 
Like that is a lot of meter. Like imagine if I use um, the second assist with it now. Like imagine the amount of meter he's actually building because of this. Like that's a lot of meter. Like that, that's a lot of meter. So this is really really important for his routing. This supercharges damage. This is why he's a shotgun character. I really recommend any combos like this and charging the spare bomb and spending it whenever you can in combos to really cash out the reward. So the last thing we're going to talk about is actually this character strength and weaknesses. We basically went over everything that he's capable of. So to kind of bring it all together, his strengths is his ability and how easy he is to open you up between having an unreactable command grab, dragon rush crushes, very strong left right game where you can do things like that that he's very very strong at opening you up he needs no help at hitting you um another very strong point about him is the damage that he has on point and his two touch potential to the team if you put him on a team because of his high damage supers being spear bomb and kalkin times uh three and kalkin times 20 he has very very strong dhcs so he'll basically always guarantee a two touch on point and even when he's not if you put if he's on your team and your team can set up spare bomb there's a very high chance you're getting two touched and you're going to get killed at a percent you did not realize you can even die from that is kind of his specialty um the other strengths about this character is actually his assist is very strong for mix up so if you're looking for a mix up assist then he actually might be in your alleyway to use um he's very good at chilling sitting back with like six multi key blasts one of the fastest key blasts in the game which is 3s that covers a, a vertical distance um a single hitting beam that's also one of the safest beams in the game the tracking spirit bomb all these tools combined are really really strong at keeping your opponent out and it's really nice so i recommend this if you like kind of relaxing and chilling with a play style kind of like poking them out and seeing what they like to do he's really really strong for this um his weaknesses though one of his biggest weaknesses is actually his stubby normals his normals while they are okay they're not like the stubbiest um it's still not nowhere near as large as some of the other characters playing right now right you have like gogeta's your vegetos these other characters have buttons that really outrange him pretty badly so that is a weakness of him you have to be careful of when you press you got to get a little bit closer than some people might like to actually make sure you're in the range of your buttons um so that's always a downside the other downside to this character is actually his difficulty clause um his combos aren't the easiest to do they actually are pretty precise compared to some of these other combos so playing him in delay might be annoying but again because he's a goku of the game and his normals aren't nearly as big and he doesn't have the most neutral skips you might find yourself feeling a little bit weird in general playing this character like in neutral and like in combos because of how precise you have to be sometimes so some people might look that look at that as a weakness i personally do i take that into consideration when looking at this character because again easy is good because if things are easy then you can focus on other things because it's easy he's not that easy so you gotta really like pay attention when you're using him the last weakness i would give this character is actually he's kind of greedy where you can put place him on a team he gives so much to the team between the mix-up assists the strong dhcs like level three mix strong mix up on point he gives so much but the downside of him is he's very greedy in which teams you can place him on because again to use this character effectively on a team and get the 100 percent out of him you really want to be able to set up a spare bomb in preferably a grounded spare bomb if there's if the team can do that to get the level three mix as well because he's like that, the characters he's allowed to play is extremely limited. And you have to be pretty cautious when trying to build a team for him that actually really, really gives him what he wants. Um, he's always been like that. They made him like that, obviously, because of the way his supers work. He's a team-specific DHC. But team building with him, you realistically want to look for characters who set up Spear Bomb very easily. So... Bardock, Gogeta is one. Vegito is really, really good for it. Gotenks is really, really good for it. Um, Team Gohan has always been good for it. The characters like Red Gogeta that can do it. They've added a few different spare bomb synergies in this game, so you can definitely experiment around. Broly's another really popular choice. So, building teams, you kind of look for that for him. The other thing I look for when building teams for him is actually looking for assists that actually help his neutral, because again, his mix-up is very strong. He does not need help mixing up. 
that is not what he needs help with. He needs a little bit of help in neutral if you do did want to give him an assist because, again, stubby normals and he doesn't have a way to skip neutral as easily as some of these other characters. So you want to give him ways to kind of like skip neutral by just like, you know, shooting a key blast and then calling an assist. Like strengthening his zoning qualities is really, really healthy for him because it allows him to safely take his turn. So giving him beam likes like 21 Broly, giving him assists like Vegito A, a very fast assist, really nice for him. UIB, really, really nice. Even Gogeta A, good synergy because again, even though it's not a beam, it kind of functions like a beam a little bit. So you get that utility out of it, really good stuff. Um, the last thing I look for when team building with this character is actually looking for uh, the spare bomb combo synergy. So like I was showing earlier how he can build a spare bomb charge and then spend it in one combo that nets him a lot of uh, reward off hitting you. I look for assists that give that. And the assists that generally give that is super high hit stun assists, so like Bardock B, Red Gogeta uh, B, um, assists that are like lockdown or wall bouncers. So like Jiren, lockdown and wall bounce, he definitely gives it. Gogeta A can give it, like I was showing earlier, because it's a wall bounce assist. Um, Vegito A, obviously, right? Super high hit stun. Assists that give him like this. Even C assists can be used for this. I know with certain C assists, he can actually charge all three, which is an interesting concept to play with, depending on which character you actually have. But this is really, really nice and really, really important when deciding to build teams for him and really should be taken into consideration. That's going to be about it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching and letting me sit here and show you guys one of my favorite characters in this game. You can check out all the things that were shown in the text version in the description below. And if you like the guide, please leave a like and comment what you think about the characters or any of his tools. And especially the teams you build for him, I would love to see them in the comment section. Peace.